Hey, it's Mark. Thanks for tuning in and watching the video. I'm going to look at a lot of things here today. I'm going to look at a couple of things that I have found to be pretty good economic leading indicators. Of course, there's always the economic data to look at. And we just had the FOMC conference today. So that's kind of an inter interesting thing to look at too. And it all looks pretty good, you know, from, from that standpoint. And I'm also going to look at some various charts and in different industries. And I'd like to welcome all my new Substack followers. We've gotten a lot of new followers in the last couple of days. So welcome aboard. I've been covering net current asset stocks for a long time now. And I started that in like 2006. I just kind of got drawn to value investing, even though I, I do put, put a lot of charts on my Twitter account and I definitely am a, a technician, you know, with, with charts. I, I'm also a huge fundamentalist and a value investor. I actually started as an investor, you know, a long time ago, like in the in the late nineties, it was just investing for me. And the the trading came along and the trading and technical analysis came along later. And I think the the charts are are just a, a, a good tool to incorporate uh, even as an investor. And there's definitely some empirical evidence on momentum and commodities and obviously there's some people that can just trade for a living but i think even even looking at, at the standpoint of investing you know charts are important obviously but let's just jump into some of the some of the things that i've been i've been looking at here. so one of the things i've been looking at and following lately has been tlt which is just a vehicle for the 20-year treasury bonds and we've seen the TLT has traded in in ranges in the past in these channels in these channel ranges. So my hunch is it's pretty predictable going forward in these channels. So what what happened in in early June was we we broke out of this down channel that it was in as as the futures market has been pricing in you know rate cuts from the Fed. So that just the the possibility of rate cuts have been pushing up the you know the bonds and these these yields I think are going to start to move you know eventually and it's been in a steady uptrend since May here and we've got some higher lows you can see there there and this one here back in uh, just a, like a week ago was really a really higher low and we've broken out today on the Federal Reserve Chairman Powell's presser today. So it's not a coincidence to me that the market, the TLT is breaking out here on that on that presser. And to me, that's a pretty big, pretty good signal that there is some more upside here on on bonds. And of course, there's an inverse relationship between, you know, usually rate, but the rates are lower and bonds are higher. So when we saw the rates go up, the bonds sold off. So it's kind of a simple thing and it's pretty easy to get some exposure to bonds, you know, if you're an investor. And I think I think there's probably a lot of people that aren't that don't have any bond exposure right now with the stock market in the past couple of years. So I really think laddered bonds are a good strategy where you buy all the different maturities, you know, like six month, twelve, twelve month, you know, two year, like ten year, five year, you know, any 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 bonds you can get exposure to it's good to to ladder them but i really do think that these these longer term bonds like the 10 year 20, 10 year 20 year are going to outperform maybe even the market over the next uh second half of the year and as we start they actually do start to cut rates when they whenever they do but so far just the expectations have been been pushing these these uh these bonds up so i think that's something to watch and i've been keeping an eye on that the other thing that I watch as uh, economic indicator is the uh, the Baltic Dry Index, which in the past has been mixed results as a as a as an indicator. But this chart here has got a bunch of the moving averages on it. But uh, I don't really look at those. So I'm gonna take those off real quick so we can actually see what's going on here. And there's still one there. So. So the Baltic Dry Index, it's been, it's been
been uptrending for a long time and this is actually just a continuation of the previous uptrend like in 2023 and it's it hit a it hit a, a level there where it just didn't didn't hold and in the long in the longer term there it's kind of a triangle and we've been it's been trending down pretty steadily here so my thoughts are that's gonna gonna continue and sometimes that that is affecting the uh the stocks of the bulk of the shippers like the shipping stocks so that's not necessarily a good thing when you look at as an as an indicator but it's not of course it's not imperative that the baltic dry index goes up for uh for the economy to do well but it's just one of those things you can look at because it's a little more it's less regional and more uh more global and with with the economy so some of the other things i look at are the um i do look at shippers sometimes but the uh fannie mae the fnma it's actually the preferreds the preferreds have been really going gangbusters here with this they broke out again in early in july so these uh these these shares are, are up and that's been the trend for a while you know when the when the stock market was doing well these were doing well so it'd be nice to see these get back on the highs because right now it's in a little downtrend because this has been something that i've been looking at that's been pretty reliable to see what what the um, stocks are going to do at certain points so I remember back in back when there was another the sell off in uh, I think it was the second half of twenty three you know these uh, these came back you know towards the, the back half of the year so those are the two things I've been looking at they're sort of you know outside the normal things that people look at and of course today we got the tech stocks had a, a big bounce back but I found that one Zeta is Zeta is a really been a really strong one even later as the other tech stocks started selling off Zeta been a huge performer this year I mean the stock is up an incredible amount and it's it came later like a lot of these other tech stocks obviously had their huge run in 23 but this one was was pr actually down you know most of the year in, 20, in 23 so it just started back and it started in 24 and it's the management's been executing really well i mean this i mean the stocks is incredible it's already up so much you know when you look at it on this chart you know it's kind of a red flag that's up so much so fast but they just keep delivering they just keep delivering on their on their performance and i've been watching these alternative energy stocks because i do think at some point in the future we're going to try to exhaust all of our resources for energy. You know, there's only so much, so much you can do with, uh, you know, natural gas and, you know, coal, coal and all the other, you know, all those other traditional sources. So I think that's the future is these alternative energy companies. And I'm not sure which one's going to be the best. You know, there's all kinds, you know, there's solar, wind, hydrogen, uh, geothermal you know you name it but these stocks have been holding in these solar stocks and there has been some there has been some 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 signs that solar is going to be incorporated there's i believe with first solar got a, a contract uh there's some, there's been some contracts that have shown that this is going to happen so it's not i'm not just i'm not just guessing here you know there is there has been some momentum in that and the other thing I was watching I I watched these these EV companies pretty closely and I noticed that Tesla Tesla has has been continuing to sell off and even today it was kind of a muted day I mean it's not really much of a reaction today so like a lot of the I mean a lot of the high like the high beta and tech was up today but the uh, the Tesla is still it's still threatening to stay in this 
down channel here. So we've got a clear down channel that it's in still. So when it breaks below that inside, cause it's got another channel there it's in. So my hunch is it's gonna break down again. Cause the the EV the EV stuff just hasn't happened, and you got you know Ford came out with their disappointment on the EV side. So I looked at I put on a pair trade. I put on um, some TSSL TSLL puts and some Lucid calls. It looks like Lucid the Lucid's in a in a up a bear flag. I mean a bull flag here, a bull flag. So it's it's trying to bottom out and I just thought they got like an SUV that came out so it it's got a high short interest um, from what I know and it's got a level there so it's it's technically bottoming out here as if as this holds as these these low threes hold because you can see the that price level there at the, about 330 this red line it's, it's it's always gone down off of that, but now it's finally starting to hold. So if there's shorts in, shorts probably got in, you know, around there. So, so we could get a squeeze here, and it looks pretty promising that this flag is going to continue. It looks like a bull flag to me, because the vault, the sell volume is really light compared to these spike days. So, or that spike day there. So it looks pretty good, and a uh, little triangle break there. The Vietnamese uh, ETF. In the Vietnamese stock market it's been pretty uh, underperforming here but I think over the long run it's gonna be really good because they've they sort of switched to a to more capitalistic economy